What is a woman? Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh, two minute teaser. There's no such thing as a gender affirming therapist. That's a contradiction in terms. Why? Because you don't affirm if you're a therapist. It's not your business to affirm. You come to see me because there's something wrong. Maybe you come to see me because a destructive element of you is wreaking havoc in your life. I'm on the side of the part of you that wants to aim up, man. That's what I'm on the side of. Okay, now I don't know what that means in your case, but we're going to talk about it. Am I going to affirm what you think? No, it's not up to me to affirm it. You don't get a casual pat on the back from a therapist for your pre-existing axiomatic. You don't get a casual pat on the back. Do they write their own subtitles and typo it? <laughs> a pat on the back? Is this audio compressed or am I dumb? No, this audio is hyper compressed. I don't know why. Back from a therapist for your pre-existing axiomatic conclusions. That's not therapy. That's a rubber stamp. Biological sex. Binary. It's been binary for like a hundred million years, longer than that. Temperament is not binary. Temperament or personality. So it's gender. Temperament is gender? Well, gender is a not a good word because it's vague and it, it isn't measurable. So do we need it? Why can't we just say temperament? What do we even need the word gender for? Well, I don't need it. Yeah. But what I would say is that people who talk about the diversity in gender are actually talking about diversity in personality and temperament, but they don't know it. You can have a masculine temperament if you're a woman. Maybe one in 10 women have the average temperament of a man. And you can have feminine men temperamentally. And it's not that uncommon because the differences between men and women temperamentally aren't that great. There are masculine girls. There are feminine boys. What are we gonna do about that? Carve them up? You step wrong as a therapist. You say the wrong thing once and like your bloody career is over. And now it's the same with physicians. How's that gonna work? You gonna go have an honest conversation with your physician when he's terrified out of his mind that he'll say something politically incorrect during the diagnostic processes? Hey man, you're sick with whatever you wanna be. See you later. You want a prescription for something? Does this really matter is, is another question. So you're using auto-generated captions? No, I'm not. These are hard cap these are hard captions. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Unless No, yeah. Double mastectomies when they're 16. Hey, why should we care if we live in a society where gender is... Well, fluid. I cared because my government decided that I had to call people by the terms that they were, that they designated, or I'd be subject to legal penalties. It's like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't care what your reason is. You don't get control of my tongue. We've been journeying across the country asking people this question, and almost nobody can answer it. Uh, what is a woman? What is a woman? Marry one and find out. Mm -hmm. I wonder if these guys would have better times communicating their um, ideas, because I think I agree with like half of what Jordan Peterson said in that. But it it always feels like it's um, it always feels like it's coming from a pay, uh, from a place of like vitriol or hatred. <laughs> like if you if you speak on these issues with like a little bit more. I wouldn't even say compassion, maybe understanding. I feel like you could get your me message across a lot better, but I don't know sometimes, when I listen to some of them speak, I don't know if the goal is to communicate a message effectively to different people, or if it's just to like placate the crowd. Like you're just trying to like get big ups from your audience or something, you know? Honestly, it sounds like Peterson was really close um, to making arguments in favor of therapy. Something that Peter is getting at that is true and has been a problem for a long time um, is that we have this very unfortunate disposition that infinite compassion is good um, and this obsession with affirming every idea that you have about yourself or the world is like the way to be the most compassionate. Um, and that is not true. That is, that is actually the opposite of true. Um, I think I mentioned this before, and uh, I think Chad got mad at me, so I'll bring it up again. Um, a really good example of this when it comes to parenting is that if you spoil a kid and you continue to spoil them over and over and over and over and over again, invariably, you're going to run into a situation where you have a kid that's 19 or 20 and they don't have a job and they don't want to get a job 
and they're leeching from everybody. And at some point as a parent, if you're a good parent, you've already kind of fucked up, but I mean, it's, nothing is irredeemable. But if you're a good parent, at some point you say, hey, listen, um, I love you so much, and we're always gonna be here for you if you need anything, but you're gonna be homeless for a while. <laughs> you need to, you need to go and be homeless for a while because your shit is fucked and nothing that anybody is doing is helping you otherwise. Um, that's like a situation that comes up when you have kids that like, they don't wanna go to school, they don't wanna work, and they've just kind of been spoiled for a long time and there's nothing left to do but like kind of kick them out and then let them figure shit out a little bit. Um, this idea that you have to be like infinitely compassionate towards people is not good. Um, like I mentioned this before in my kind of like my little manifesto and I've mentioned this in, um, I think I've just mentioned this a bit in general, like the, you, people need to be challenged to some extent, like it's an important part of growing. Um, you have to be willing to challenge yourself or other people have to be able to challenge you. And it seems like we're moving wouldn't that make the kid hate you forever? Yeah, which is a problem where weak parents don't want their kid to ever be upset, so they continue, they placate the kid forever, and then the kid is fucked. And these grow up to be the worst types of humans. Uh, for better or for worse, but. My aunt had to do this recently. My cousins were in their mid-20s, didn't go to college, didn't work, didn't want to work, and wouldn't pitch in with anything because she'd spoiled them too much, yeah. Wish my parents came out when I was 20, depending on my parents for way too long. Yeah, it's it's like an unfortunate thing because parents think that they're doing the right thing because um because they're just they're being compassionate and kind to of their children, right? How could they how could that ever possibly be wrong? But I mean, yeah. Destiny, you should say something along the lines of like, you have two months to find a job or you're homeless, not immediately you have to move out. No, it this, what I'm talking about usually comes after months or years of, you've got two weeks to find a job, you've got two months to find a job, you've got two whatever to find, like, usually it's after failing that over and over and over and over again. It's not like a one day this comes out of nowhere. This is usually something that'll be building for weeks, months, or years. My dad is that way that his 50s is still living off his parents. Wait, Jesus, really? Are there actually people that permadied on the server? Are you guys serious? What do people generally do when they get kicked out and have literally nothing? What's the first steps? Um, well, sometimes they'll start floating around on some friends' couches and they'll either steal from them or leech off of them and never contribute. Um, but eventually, they either you, it's at some point, it's sink or swim, right? <clears throat> Isn't it kind of the parents' fault for getting that bad in the first place? Yeah, it is, of course. But I mean, at some point, you have to take corrective actions, right? Are there any streamers like that? Um, streaming is different because you can be rewarded for being a lazy fuck and then make a living off it, so it's a little different. Hey, to interrupt you, Steven, but you have one voicemail. You must kill the ghost, Steven. Kill the ghost, Steven. They are birthing him, Steven. They are birthing the Antichrist, Steven. You must kill the ghost, Steven. Kill the ghost. Start a pig farm, boo. Um, what if they themselves? I mean, it's, I mean, if it is, then it is. I mean, that's, it sucks, but... <clears throat> Were you still working when you first started streaming? Yeah, of course. Terrified of having a kid that clings to some self-diagnosed mental disorder that gives them an excuse to not be independent as an adult succeed? Do you ever worry about Nathan? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a fight between parents and kid. The problem is it depends on how rebellious the kid probably ends up being or like how much they trust you or don't trust you. Because like if you're telling your kid one, here is the issue. Um, this is, it's a little worrying. This kind of um, relates to trans stuff, but also just like stuff in general, especially with mental illness today. Um, people are very quick to blame their environment for personal failings. And I feel like we know this psychologically, but people don't want to admit this. But um, but like, I, like I'm trying to imagine for like minorities in the United States, mentally, it's gotta be like a huge struggle because like, especially if you're neurodivergent as well. Like if you're like black with like ADHD, I feel like you have every excuse in the world to just be a lazy sack of shit and do nothing with your life forever and constantly feel like you can blame everything else. Um, like, oh, like it's all systemic injustice. Like that's why my whole life is fucked. And oh, I'm neurodivergent. So nothing I do is ever gonna work. And oh, it's like white supremacy. But like at some point, um, 
regardless of what you think about anything, it, it like it is a fact that like this mindset can like be incredibly toxic towards any kind of self betterment or self development. Like you're, you're like you're gonna you're gonna mind fuck yourself or a, another person into thinking that like oh true I can't do anything ever and I've got like a perfect list of excuses in every single part of my life for why you know this th these things will never get better and it's like I don't know man that sounds a little it's a little spooky I think people act predictably in a given condition but it's bad to internalize that mindset personally yeah people act predictably but I think things can be uh, like. Things can be super self-fulfilling as well. This is your societal versus individual prescription divide, right? Um, a little bit. Like you should recognize, like you should recognize what your societal problems are. But if you learn too much about that as an individual, like it's gonna, it's gonna fuck you. Like it will. What if you, what if you brush those things off and it makes it harder? I mean, like, yeah. I, I, it, it, there's a balance, obviously. Yeah, do I have to say that? I'm sorry, there's a balance. Obviously, if you have like fucking Down syndrome and your dream at five years old is to be a fucking astronaut, okay? You're probably not in a good position. I, I forget that I have to like give both sides of like the most obvious fucking answer on every single fucking thing in the world. If you're missing both of your legs, you're probably not gonna be a very good cyclist. Um, yeah, there's a balance, okay? But we're obviously, we're nowhere fucking near the other end of the balance. Right now, we're on the side where nothing is your fault for anything. You have no personal responsibility for everything. Everything is just, like, look at how you guys responded when I was saying that, like, oh, like, if you can't afford your place, you need to fucking move. I've never in my life seen so many retarded excuses for people that have, like, never moved before for why it's literally impossible for a poor person to move their job or move um, for a poor person to move out of their place. Like, oh, you can't do it. There is a deposit. Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, you have to rent a truck. Oh, and it's like, hey, what the fuck are you talking about? Poor people move all the fucking time it's the yeah, most important the thing we have like and, and, and like that um doesn't just apply to poor people either like it can apply to literally anything like neurodivergent people people of a different skin color people who are um different sexualities or whatever like how much do you think you have to make an hour working full-time to be considered poor i mean it's going to depend on where you live and whether or not you have a roommate or a significant other right how do you find that balance though um personally um I mean, it's hard, but like you have to work as hard as you possibly can, like always. Like you should always be trying to work as hard as you possibly can on anything. Um, I think any time you start getting into a mindset where you're like, oh, I probably can't do this because, and then you have like some thing, like you're a minority or like you're whatever brain neurodivergent or whatever, I think at that point you're, you're gonna get into an area where like you're destroying yourself. Um, you are a Sigma. You are the definition of success. Wow. You don't need to work. Your existence is worth the suffering of others. You don't need to close the fridge. You don't need to clean your room. You don't need to expend effort. You need to farm. How do you convince someone otherwise? Um, I mean, to these people, so much shit is working against them. They think, what's the point? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You have like role models or something. I don't know I, I truly I truly don't know the answer <clears throat> like I, I hear like I hear so much cr like uh, I don't know how to say it ah uh, fuck hold on I'm trying to become less like condescending it's like it's very difficult um to not be condescending um but it the the thing that I'll say is that like usually when you find like incredibly successful people there's a lot of people that will like succeed in spite of things. I might be one of those spoiled adults. I'm 22 and only finished one semester of uni, and I have somewhat severe mental health issues. I've applied for disability, but I'm worried I won't amount to anything if I keep going in this trajectory. Advice. All right, keep working, dude. Um, some people will like push through, like regardless of problems, and try to succeed on things, and other people need like every single thing like set up perfectly for them. To have you ever thought project? about doing more climate change-related politics stuff? Nope, not at all. <clears throat> I don't remember. Oh, if you're trying on anything in life, you have to like you have to do the best that you could do. There is like somehow this message got morphed or or mutated growing up, where um, teachers would say things like it's about the effort that you put in, not about like the results. That's true, but somehow we like we t we we mutated this message into like it doesn't matter what your results are as long as you tried your hardest. LOL. But like. Truly, it um, 
uh, it, it's it's not supposed to be that like the results don't matter. It's supposed to be that like you should always be you should really always be giving your all. I'm trying to remember if there was a. Okay, somebody tell me if I'm making this up. I don't remember if this is a cartoon episode, or I don't remember if this was a TV show. Um, was there was there ever a show where not this way? Was there ever a show where one of the characters turned in an assignment? And I think it was like it was it was pretty well done, and they got like they 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 did what they were supposed to, but I think the teacher gave them like a B or a C on the assignment. Was this a Boy Meets World episode? And then the guy was like, well, "What the fuck? Why did I only get a B or a C on this? Like I did everything right." And the teacher was like, "Because I know that you can do better. I know that you have the opportunity to do better than this, or not the opportunity. You have the capability of doing better than this." Um, Breaking Bad? Was this a was this some Breaking Bad? I don't remember, but it's yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be along those ideas. Like you never know what your personal limitations are um, if you're not willing to push yourself. And if you are in a mindset of like making excuses every time that shit gets fucked for you, then you're always going to be. You're talking about this XQC quote. The result is irrelevant because the effort was there. Based. Might even be like from a. Might even be from House. I do legitimately think that if you do as much as you can, you should succeed in most tasks. People are a lot more capable than what they think they are. Yeah, I think that's true. That TV show sounds fucked. A B for doing a perfect job, but because you didn't try. Well, it's ha it has to do with like your capability, right? Like you should always be living up to like, hold on, fuck. I have to navigate this conversation really carefully because I feel very strongly about all of this and I'm gonna get triggered by the most retarded shit in chat if I go down this road too much. <laughs> <clears throat> a good teacher or a good friend or a good colleague ideally is going to be somebody that challenges you to do more than the minimum you have to do or to do more than like what is assigned or whatever, like to live up to your maximum potential. That should always be your goal in life. Your goal in life should generally be to like, not, and I don't mean this in like every single moment of your life. You've got to be on the Sigma grind set, like wake up at 5 a.m., go to the gym for two hours, come home, eat six eggs, study calculus, go to the gym for two more hours, then go to work at nine o'clock. I don't mean you have to like live like this. I'm not saying that you have to have the, the ultimate grind set life. But I'm just saying like in the things that you apply yourself in, you should apply yourself as, as much as you can, like do what you can um, to, to the maximum of your abilities, not just... And then if you get into a mindset of, um, of making excuses for not being able to do things, eventually you're going to, uh, you're going to cripple yourself from being able to do anything at all. You just have to be really careful not to, get, not to be in that mindset. The hardest part is motivation. No, because people say you can have most things you try to, which is true, but it's purely hypothetical. Where you're gonna... Yeah, I, but I, what I'm speaking to right now more is a societal thing where people are very keen to make, um, people are very keen to make huge like excuses for certain groups of people. And I think... I think that you can mind fuck yourself really hard if you've been fed this idea that you are part of a group that's not supposed to succeed. There's a really good Kay and Peel skit on this. Stephen, when are you going to ingest buckets of cum for your diet? I hear it is high in protein and low on calories. Fuck, I'm not gonna do this. It's basically it's a gay guy being a dick to another dude for like three minutes, and the guy keeps saying, you're being mean to me because you're homo And then at the end he finds out his coworker's also gay, and he's like, oh shit, he's not homo I'm just an asshole. <laughs> but I mean, it's the same too with a lot of the trans people that I fight with online, right? Where a lot of them are consciously like, oh my god, it's trans, it's trans Like, Kevl's like, people don't hate you because you're trans Some probably do. Most people hate you because you're a fucking asshole. Like, you're just a, a shit person. <laughs> um, but because like you're trans, I don't even think, like somebody like, Kevils is actually a really good example. Somebody like Kevils is probably so mind poisoned with like victim mentality that they are probably never going to improve as a person and they need to, right? Because this is like almost objective, by objective standards, like a dog shit human. Uh, but they'll never improve because they have every reason not to, right? Well, people are mean to me because I'm trans. People don't understand what I'm saying because they're transphobic. Uh, people just don't, yeah, like, yeah, of course, obviously, you know? And when you get stuck in that mindset, like you're fucked. Like you, you actually are you're actually fucked. You were actually fucked in your head, you know? <clears throat> um, I keep forgetting what I'm doing. Oh, hey, what's up? Wake up. Doesn't Kevl's purposely try to hide behind Agassiz trying to genuinely believe people are what they claim? No, I think that I think that Kevl's is somewhat genuine. I think a lot of those yeah, people- I just want you to know that, that you're a bunch of lazy. Ungrateful. 
who frankly should just take A. No, I never said that. Um, I think a lot of those people genuinely do believe, um, I think a lot of those people genuinely do believe that like, oh, like people only don't like me because I'm trans or all of this is transphobia or whatever. Um, I, th I don't think that they're just lying when they say that. Oh, is it F3 plus H? Well, thank you. Yeah, I don't think people are lying or making those up as defenses when they say that. Um, I think they genuinely do believe those things. Oh, it's 34 emeralds in a book, fuck me. Your Discord loves white women too much? Good. Shit, who joined? Even. <sighs> What's up? Why do you why do you exhale like that? I just every time you join, it's always gonna be some wacky shit. But go ahead. What do you got? This is wacky. This is just a normal. I just have a little bit of a question. Just a bit of a question. Okay. Yeah. What's up? I'm just I'm just wondering. So, do you, so I want to avoid issues while on uh, Twitch, YouTube, doing social media stuff in general. Yeah. How, so. Okay, so when I was banned last night for saying nigga, as I'm a black man, I can say that. Okay. Um, I'm wondering, like, what is the, what is, like, the algorithm, or what is causing, because I got unbanned pretty quickly, so obviously it was a fuck up, but, like, what is the, what is the, what is the thing I can avoid? I could just, like, avoid saying the word, right? But, like, I'm, I'm half black, it's in my vocab, and other people say it as well, and they don't get caught for this. I'm sure Bruce Drop -em Off has said this millions of times. So, like, what is the... Like, okay. it just man, well, man, it might be an algorithm that picks up when white people say it, okay? Because when you say it, you sound white as fuck. Wait, say it one more time. Nigga. Like, what, is, what, is, what is wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know. You just, it kind of sounds like, kind of sounds like Mr. Mooten saying it. Like, Mr. Mooten, I, I like, so here's the deal. Like, if Mr. Mooten was on cam and he was saying, okay, I guess maybe what, I'm um, on cam. Are you still with uh, Sushia? Like, is she in the room with, like, is she present? Oh, like, are you guys, like, dating or whatever? Like, yeah, we're engaged, yes. Uh, how many times has she been banned? Uh, ever? I think, like, once. Okay, let her run your social media accounts, okay? So that's step one, okay? Because it seems like okay. she has the ability to not get banned. Ask her to approve all your tweets, okay? Okay. Well, I mean, okay, so it has nothing to do with tweets. It has to do with what I'm saying vocally. Because, like, I do say outlandish stuff, and I, my... Like, it's obviously okay. Like, I was in this context of what I was doing. I was just rapping it, right? So, like, let's say I'm like you, and I, I rap that, I rap that. Uh -huh. you know? Like, is that is that even, like, is, it, is there an algorithm that detect people that are, like, that sound white saying nigga? Is that, like, is it, like... <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm not, I'm not sure. You should uh, email the trust and safety team and ask them. Or tell me. That's why I'm like, you watch YouTube videos all day. You know, I'm like, you have to know something. Because, like, I, I just don't. Fucking, I just don't get generally understand. Like they have to like, I sound funny saying nigga. I don't understand why people are like uncomfortable with this. My mom does not say anything about it. My brother does not say anything about it. I don't understand what the issue is. I just, it's, I can, I just, it just feels, we it just feels really weird, and I just don't know how to avoid. Because this goes for other stuff in general, right? Like, um, what's a way to dodge an algorithm? I just don't, I just don't understand. Well, I just don't understand it. It's an algorithm. You're probably not going to dodge it, huh? That's kind of the whole point. Is that it auto detects shit, right? Maybe you stop saying the N word and stop having penis on the screen. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Well. Or you can just keep getting banned and then leverage that as some big like movement to try to show how like Twitch discriminates against like. Are we? Are you? Are you allowed to say mulatto still, or is that a banned word? Uh, I think you could say it, but I don't think it's a good word to say. I think like okay. it's like saying that I'm gusano. Like, can you say like halfy? It's not like gusano. What? I say so. I've never heard. No one's ever called me a mulatto in like a derogatory way. Like I've been like like in a way that's been like uh, I don't know. Like if someone says gusano, I don't take it like too seriously. Like I don't care. Wait, if someone calls you, know? you gusano? No, no, fucking mulatto. Oh, you know? mulatto. Like, I think if someone says gusano, it's like I. You know, do you say? Like, is it just? Like, do you just say mixed race? Well, they call me. Well, so usually when people are trying to be derogatory. No, towards what's the non derogatory way of referring to like a mixed race person? Can you say half breed or like DBZ or. See, that's obviously more aggressive. Uh, do you just say African American? I don't know, dude. Like, I don't fucking. I don't know. I, biracial? Biracial. Oh, okay. Biracial would be the word. Yes, yes. So it's like fine. Mulan says mulatto though. It's, I mean, it sounds pretty like weird, 
But I would say it is like Gusan. I haven't heard anybody like say that it's been like a big thing. It's like an old timey thing. Wait, does he keep saying Gusano? Am I hearing this or is yes, he I'm saying that? Does I do I have a lisp? Oh, yeah. I, well, I don't know why you're comparing those two things. Are they not, so, do they, are they not like, in the same realm? No, I think Gusano is just when you're trying to insult somebody. I thought Mulatto was just how we used to describe like mixed race people. No, say that. It's like a, I think people usually have said that before as a derogatory. No, I don't think not? it was derogatory. You, that was just how, in my days, that's how you referred to like half black, half white people. Or, ha or mixed race people. Days, we're like, oh, we're not too you're a zoom. I didn't know that's actually something someone used. The only time I ever I ever was called mulatto was from this co communist girl that I was talking to, and she would use it as a derogatory way to me. But I was more like I, I thought it was like a frappuccino thing, so I didn't really understand what it was. So I didn't really like take too much into it, and I haven't really heard it used since. Okay. But yeah. So okay. So really, there's no way. So I can just I just have to. Not say nigga, I guess, and I'll just be, I'll just be off that. Okay, cool. I, I just, I just want to, I just feel weird, you know, because like it's, it's in my vocab. I do all this stuff, and I just don't want to, you know, have to every time I say this word, you know, do like uh, do like uh, talk about my, you know, absentee father. Just do like, you know, just do like ninja. That's what we do over in my spectrum of the skin color. So that's what I do. I type ninja, but I say nigga because I'm I'm a grown adult. I'm not gonna say ninja normally because I'm about fucking sixteen, you know. I'm. It's just, it's just different. And I don't think, and I think I I think I can say I can I mean, like if you said that to me, I'd be uncomfortable a little bit. But like if I say it to you, I think it's a little different. Yeah. Okay. No. I don't know. Maybe. What do you mean? Yeah. I mean, I I understand what you're saying, dude. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just looking for answers on that. That's all. Cause I just wanna, I just wanna, you know, be more safe, be more friendly. Mm -hmm. Brand friendly, right? Brand friendly, yes, yes, yes. You gotta do the boxing match they're gonna show up to, and I can't get banned before that, you know. Yeah, true. When is that? Uh, you have that scheduled yet? So I've been talking to Berlin. Me and him have been in comms. Um, October sixth is our date. He mm -hmm. wants to do like a whole thing. He wants to get like a banner. Yeah. All that stuff. Um, I have been setting it up, but uh. I've not locked anything in yet, uh, okay. just because, you know, there's a there's a crowdsourcing thing we need to do. Um, so there's all that situation. All right, well that's my that's that's my bit. So needed to know that. Uh, yeah, the boxing thing. Just be ready to at least attend. Okay, I'd appreciate. What that. is the what state are you having this in or whatever? It's it's a uh, like 20 minutes from San Diego, like the day before TwitchCon. But you're gonna go to, even though you're banned, right? I'm absolutely not. Wait, what? Are you trolling? I, well, one, I can't go in the convention. Okay. Yeah. Two, I've been working nonstop, so I haven't even made any like new Coomer friends. So three, why the fuck would I even waste my time going? There'll be other Coomer friends that you can make along the way. You know. I can't like, go into the convention. Party. You think I'm just gonna like patrol like outside? Of like you at know, restaurants, like trying to find people to hook up. Like that sounds creepy, actually. You were there the last two years. Oh, well, not prior to that. Like there's I stuff that goes on outside. Of yeah, I know, but I don't want to be. That just seems so lame. <laughs> you have the exact time and place. Uh, I mean, like, how much time were you in TwitchCon besides like doing panels versus like? It doesn't outside matter. What? Just going people. to an event that I'm like fucking banned from attending it seems kind of yeah, shitty. Okay. You know, it hurts. It hurts my emotions. Okay. Okay. Well, that's depressing. Okay, well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll have to tell Berlin uh, the Scratch Destiny on the list. So we'll keep that in mind. Maybe. Uh, well, I maybe mean, I can still go to your boxing thing. I'm just not going to TwitchCon. Okay. Oh well, that's the whole thing. It's in San Diego, so the point would be that you would be. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Cool. Then that's fine. Then I'll tell Berlin to keep you on the on the books. Um. Okay. Fly Ryan. Thanks for tier seven, buddy. Jesus. We're going back to work. Have fun. <clears throat> okay. What? Sorry, I'm listening. I'm gonna be right. You'll be right. Oh, okay. <laughs>